Welcome back everyone, Patrick here and moving on to another question dealing with the factor and remainder theorem for polynomials. So if x minus 2 is a factor of the polynomials f of x equals 2x to the power of 3 plus mx squared plus nx minus 3 and of this polynomial g of x equals x to the power of 3 minus 3mx squared plus 2nx plus 4, we have to find both values m and n. So notice that we're told x minus 2, this is a factor of this polynomial f of x and this polynomial g of x. So it's a factor of both. So if we factored both of those polynomials, x minus 2 would be one of the factors. Now, what does this mean? It also means that if we take those polynomials and divide them, so if we take f of x, and let's say we were to divide it by x minus 2, the remainder would equal 0, right, by the factor theorem, right? If a f something is a factor of a polynomial, if you divide that polynomial by that factor, the remainder is going to be zero. So same thing with g of x, we're told that x minus 2 is a factor of both, right? So the remainder would be zero for g of x as well. Now, another way to get the remainder, if we're getting, just in general, if we take f of x and divide it by a factor x minus a, then the remainder is going to equal f of a, right? And same thing if we take g of x and divide it by x minus a. The remainder is going to equal g of a, right? So these two statements, that's the remainder theorem. These two statements, it's the factor theorem. So if we combine these together, then because x minus 2 is a factor, the remainder is 0. Well, we also know that if we divide f of x by x minus 2, f of 2 is going to be the remainder, and we know the remainder is 0. So we're combining both the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. Same thing with g of x. x minus 2 is a factor of g of x, so we know that the remainder, when we divide, is going to be 0. And then by the remainder theorem, we also know that the remainder is going to be g of 2. So we know g of 2 is going to equal 0. And so from those two statements right there, we can create two equations. Because we're solving for two unknowns, so we need two equations. So if we say f of 2 is equal to 0, well, what we can do is we can plug in 2 for the x value. So we'd have 2 to the power of 3, which is 8, times 2 would be 16, plus 2 to the power of 2 is 4, uh, times m it would be 4m, 2 times n would be 2n, minus 3 is equal to 0. So there's one equation, and then g of 2 equaling 0, we could plug in 2 for the x values for g of x. So we'd have 8 over here minus uh, 2 to the power of 2 is 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. So this would be negative 12m. 2 times 2 is 4. So we'd have 4n plus 4 is equal to 0. So those are the two equations we would be working with. Now to simplify this a little bit further, notice the 16 minus 3, that would give us 13, and then we have 4m plus 2n is equal to 0. And then simplifying this right here, uh, we'll have 8 plus 4, which is 12, minus 12m plus 4n is equal to 0. Notice this, we can actually simplify. We could divide everything by 4. You don't necessarily have to, but whenever I see an opportunity like that, I usually take it. 
right? Over here, we can't really do that. We can, we could divide everything by two, but then we'd have a fraction over here, 13 over two, right? So usually I divide if I notice that when dividing everything by that number, you're not gonna get a fraction. And so from here, you could do substitution, you could do elimination. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna isolate for this n over here. So I'm gonna bring both of these over. So we'd have three M minus three. And then I'm gonna plug this for this N. So we'd have 13 plus four M plus two bracket three M minus three is equal to zero. So this would be uh, what? 13 plus four M plus six M minus six is equal to zero. So this would be 10m and then over here we'd have 13 minus 6 which is 7 bring it over that would be negative 7 so m would equal negative 7 over 10. so that's what the m value is and then if we want to get the n value i would suggest plugging it in there so we know n is equal to 3m minus 3. So we'd have 3 times negative 7 over 10 minus 3, which would be negative 21 over 10 minus, let's change this to be a common denominator. So this would be 30 over 10, which would give us negative 51 over 10. And so that ends up being the answer right there. Right, so that's the m value that's the end value. So if you get a question like this, where you have something that's a factor of two polynomials, basically, if it's x minus a, then basically f of a is equal to zero, because the remainder is zero, and then g of a is equal to zero. Create your two equations, solve for the two unknowns.